Welcome back to McMaster University course Computing and Software 701 Logic and Discrete Mathematics. Today we're going to finish up the topic of recursion and induction and specifically we're going to talk about monotone functional recursion. So let's talk about fixed point operators. A fixed point operator on a set of higher order functions is a function fix such that for all functions in our set of higher order functions if we apply fix to one of these functions then that will give us a fixed point of the function. So a fixed point of capital F is any G such that when we apply F to G we get G. These functions are higher order functions because they're taking functions as input and returning functions as output. So fixed point operators they provide an alternate way to define functions by recursion. So consider this equation. It says that the fixed point of f applied to appropriate arguments equals f applied to its fixed point to the same arguments. So this is true because fix gives us fixed points. Now, if we think of little f as a fixed point, then we could rewrite this as little f applied to x1 up to xn equals f applied to little f applied to these arguments. So you can see we really have a recursive definition here. We have a definition of f in terms of an expression involving f and this expression can in include various recursive calls to f. So you can think of a fixed point a fixed point uh, operator as a way of giving us a uh, a different kind of definition of recursion. Now, if we wanted to use this definition of recursion, we basically can just unfold fix of f here. We can replace it with f of fix of f. And we can do that as many times as we need to compute an answer. So, in other words, if we put in some arguments for x1 and xn, we put them over here, and then as needed, we un unfold fix of f. Okay, so uh, as an example, let's consider a very famous combinator from combinatorial logic called the y combinator. And the y combinator can be expressed as this lambda expression in lambda calculus. And it is a fixed point operator for lambda expressions. So let's see why that is. Okay, so if I write down up here y it's going to equal lambda f and lambda x here f applied to xx And we have the same thing repeated again. So that's why. So if I apply y to g, now we're hoping this is going to give us a fixed point of g. So what we're going to get here is we're going to, if we do beta reduction, we're going to get this.
And now we have a function applied to an argument. We can do beta reduction again, basically replace all the x's with this. And we get g of this. We're replacing these two x's here with what we have over here. Okay, and if you think a moment what this is, it looks like this if we apply y to g. Excuse me. This part, wait, I didn't write this quite right down, quite correctly. We have g here, and what is this part right here? Let me use a different color. This part here is going to be the same as y applied to g. So that shows that the y combinator applied to any function g gives us a fixed point of g. Okay, so this allows us, so we're going to take advantage of this to develop a way of defining functions using what are called monotone functionals. Okay, so our definition of a functional is it's just a higher order function. It has this type, alpha goes to alpha, and alpha can be some function. So it's mapping a function to a function, and the function can take any number of arguments. Okay, so that's what a functional is, and now we can define the notion of a subfunction. So if we take any two functions, g and h of type alpha, we can say g is a subfunction of h if and only if the following is true. So this says for all arguments that we give to g, uh, notice that g and h are going to be, uh, they're of the same types, so they're going to take the same number of arguments. So if I give g appropriate arguments and it's defined, that's what the down arrow means. So this means that this is defined. So if it is defined at a particular set of arguments, then g at those arguments equals h at those arguments. So this means that whenever g is defined, h is defined, and g equals h. Another thing we can see here is that the domain of g is going to be a subset of the domain of h. And g, g equals h on the domain of g. So h is an extension of g. That means wherever g is defined, h is defined the same way, but h could be defined on other values as well. Okay, so that's what we mean by g being a subfunction of h. And then f is monotone. This is a definition we've already seen before. Uh, f is monotone if for all g and h, um, if g is a subfunction of h, then f of g is a subfunction of h. So f is monotone if f respects the subordering of the subfunction ordering of our type alpha. Okay, so this this gives us an interesting fixed point theorem. Every monotone functional has a least fixed point. And the proof is we basically apply f repeatedly to the empty function on alpha until we obtain a fixed point. So I'm going to show you how this is done. So 
So the basic idea is like this. So we, this is going to be our empty function. That means its domain is the empty set. It's, it's completely undefined. And we know that this will be a subfunction of f. of, uh, let me just go back here and look. Yeah, what a, well wait, what I, I didn't write this quite right. It's a sub-function of f applied to the empty, the empty function. So when we apply f to the empty function, it's going to be some function. And so because f is monotone, then we know this is true. So we get this. And we can continue this. So we know that this is going to be a subfunction of well, f applied once, and that's a subfunction f applied twice, and we can continue. And technically, we may have to go and continue past omega. So we can continue, we may have to go to f applied omega times, go through the ordinals as needed, f applied omega plus one, and so forth. I'm not going to go into that at the moment because I've already said that I'm not really going to uh, require uh, you to understand how ordinals work. But the interesting thing he is here is each time we do this, because this is a subfunction relation, the domain either gets bigger or not. If the domain suddenly does not get bigger, like let's say instead of having this, here we have actually equal, this function equals this, that means they have the same domain, and that means we have a fixed point. Now, so if the domain ever becomes equal, we have a fixed point. So if the domain of this equals this, when I apply f to it again, nothing will change. So that means we'll have a fixed point. Now, each time we apply this, if the domain is not equal, that means the domain gets bigger. And the domain can only get so big because the 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 um, input set that we started with for alpha, if we go back here, the set of members of alpha, whatever that is, at some point we will exhaust that set. And at that point we'll have to have a fixed point. So that's a quick sketch that, of how we prove this fixed point theorem. So let me, let me repeat something about this theorem. The theorem says that every monotone function has a least fixed point. So if we have a mono, functional, it's monotone, it's going to have a least fixed point. So this gives us a way of doing recursion, which I'm calling monotone functional recursion. So it's a scheme for defining partial functions of any type, any type whatsoever. So this Type doesn't even have to involve uh, numbers or natural numbers. And an instance of this scheme is given by a functional f. So we have this scheme. The instances are just functional f's. And functional f's that are monotone. And then uh, if we have an instance, then that will define a partial function f, which is the least fixed point partial function little f, which is the least fixed point big f. That's how it works. 
So the instances are just monotone functional recursions and functional, I should say, monotone functionals. And by then, by monotone functional recursion, they define functions which are the least points of these functionals. Okay, so here are some examples. Given um, four simple examples, the empty function, which I define two different ways, and the uh, factorial function, and the iterated summation function. So these, I'll claim, all four of these, are monotone. They're functionals which are monotone. Therefore, we can use them to describe, to define the least fixed point of these functionals. So let's take the first one. I claim it's the empty function. We can, we can compute the least fixed point. Because let's, let's call this f. And if we apply f to the empty function, just using this, so I plug in empty function for this little f. This equals the function that maps the integers to the empty function applied to n. So this, this is undefined. So this is a function which is always undefined. So this equals the empty function. So the fixed point of this functional is the empty, the least fixed point is the empty function. So this defines the empty function. Now normally, if you saw this kind of definition, you would think this was a bogus recursive definition. But here it's not. It actually is defining a function. It turns out it defines the empty function. If we look at this second example, it's going to be very similar. We're going to have this. And this is going to be something undefined plus one. The whole thing is undefined. So it will also, it will also equal the empty function. OK, so let's look at the factorial function. So what I'm going to do is just take the empty function, apply this factorial uh, monotone functional to it. So let, let's call this g. And I have some space down here. So let's apply g to the empty function. And so what do I get? Well, I replace the f with the empty function. So I'm going to get the function that takes a natural number and gives back, if n equals 0, it gives back 1. Otherwise, it gives back the empty function. minus 1 times a. Now this is going to be undefined because the empty function applied to anything is undefined. So this equals this equals 1 if n equals 0 and it's undefined if n is greater than 0. Now notice the domain has gotten bigger. The empty function's domain was the empty set. Now, the domain of this, the domain of this is the set any, any, n, or is this just the set zero? In other words, the domain of this equals this. Now, if I compute this, That's going to give me this function. But here I'm going to have g of this. And if you think a moment, what's the domain of this going to be? 
going to be this. This part tells it's one. This is undefined except when, except when n is zero. So n is if n is zero when this argument is zero. So that means n will be one. And so in that case, we're going to have the value of zero, which is one, one times one. So you can see that. Um, wait, I made a mistake. The domain of this is this. And if we continue, that's going to be this. And you can see the fixed point is actually going to be um, right this. The fix the fixed point of G is going to be G applied omega times to the empty set. Okay, so, so after an infinite number of steps, we'll get the full factorial function defined. Okay, so the last example is a little more complicated. Let me clean up this stuff a bit. This is an example which we, are, we define the same way. It looks sort of like a recursive function, but really what we're doing is we're defining, let's call this function h, this functional h. And basically, um, the fixed point of h, I should say the least fixed point, It equals this function. I'll just write it like this. I'll leave out the types such that such that i equals m n f five. So the least fixed point of h is a function that gives us, I'll write it again so it's a little clearer, that gives us this notation. Okay, so this is a quick introduction to monotone functional recursion. Uh, what I like about it is it's very powerful. You can use it to define recursive functions over all different kinds of values. It's different than other kinds of definitions by recursion because it's very much based on partial functions. And once you know your functional is monotone, you know it's going to have a least fixed point. Okay, so we're gonna stop here. Uh, and this completes our topic on recursion and induction. Goodbye, see you later.